You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, presented by The Nation Network. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. What you don't know, fair podcast listeners, is that we are 20 minutes late because we've had computer issues. Normally, I get excited when the charts go all wonky, and I did today. And then Tyler tried to fix it for me because I'm distracted like a budgie. Yeah, but then the computer froze. And what's frustrating is I spent like 15 minutes yesterday deleting a bunch of old stuff off this computer because we were out of space on it. And then today, should we get a hard drive where we can move that to that stuff to rather than deleting? I don't know. I don't think we wanted to keep any of the stuff I got deleted. You don't want to keep old episodes of this podcast. Oh, oh no, no, not it wasn't not this podcast. podcast. I was deleting. What well, you got? A former, Let's throw everybody under the bus. It was one of my former podcasts. Ah, R.I.P. Suitcase in the scrap. No, 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 not that one. Oh, the other one. <laughs> BLT bets. All right. <laughs> I did delete a bunch of BLT bets. All right. Ah, gone, but never forgotten. <laughs> Still got the community page on Twitter. Let's see how active it is. Some people, it, some people come Come on. Throw your bets in there. <laughs> yeah, we might wonder, check it. No one of the podcasts dead is dead. Once per calendar year. I promise to check your bets. <laughs> I promise. We are back from Toronto. It's the three of us. Dan's here. No Rick, because he's probably at a swim up bar right now. He's at a golf course right now. I just checked his Instagram. And? Looks how's it look? Freaking beautiful. Golfy. Yeah. Rick's probably gonna come back. He's gonna be all tanned. Definitely. He's gonna be feeling fresh. He's gonna be feeling loose. And the next thing you know, we're gonna be on a plane to Arizona. That's coming up in 12 short days, Liam. Ooh, yeah. Oh, 12. the video. What the He's fuck? He's at the Hard Rock Golf Club, is yeah. what I saw on Rick's story. Wow. And now we've got an broke. issue with the camera, Tyler. <laughs> Are you shitting me? What is happening? The list of devices connected Maybe to the operating system has this changed. Show yes, is not open the har- the audio hardware preference. <laughs> as far as I can tell, we're still recording the audio, so I can just give you a play by play on Tyler's run through. He is fixing the camera. He has adjusted the camera. He is now sitting back down in his spot. We are good to go. Okay, let's do this because we're already now starting. We're doing it. Late. We're doing it. I'm I trying. Know, yeah, I'm just. We're frustrated. three minutes in. If you only knew how to run the equipment. <laughs> Uh, Uh, don't hurt me i'm going to read this next part verbatim for a limited time our listeners can get 25 percent off and zero delivery fees on their first order of 15 dollars or more when you download the doordash app and enter the code nation 25 that's 25 percent off and up to 10 dollar value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download download Download, download. Your DoorDash. download the DoorDash <laughs> app and in the app store and enter the promo code Nation25. Don't forget that's code Nation25 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash offer valid in Canada. Subject to change, terms do apply. So today when we're looking at the uh, for who delivered for DoorDash, we're going to go back to All-Star Weekend. Made some changes to the skills competition. They brought back the NHL player draft. The game itself was a little bit different in how it went. So I'm going to start right beside me. Mr. Nation Dan, you're up first. Who delivered for you from the All-Star Weekend festivities? Wow. Either good or bad. Hey, I'm a person that loves the internet and I enjoy when the internet has some fun with things. So I'm going to give it to Michael Buble for his, his bit slash not a bit. I don't know. Like you guys were there. So maybe you saw or got a sense better than (laughs) the segment. Not a bit. It was not a bit. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. So, uh, Michael Buble, uh, having fun getting microdosed by his friend, uh, that he thinks was maybe a little bit more than a microdose. <laughs> I'm just going to jump into uh DoorDash delivered Michael Buble. All we, I'm honestly, Will Arnett was great too, but I'd probably give Buble the top spot in the most interesting celebrity coach from the whole weekend. Not just the microdose thing. Obviously to me, in my opinion, that was the most interesting thing that's happened in an NHL press conference probably ever. It went viral. Matt Larkin was on TMZ because he was the one that asked the question that prompted the response. It was just a really fun piece of content and a guy who gave an honest answer. Was it a bit? Was it not? I have no idea to me. Probably not. That's just allegedly in my opinion. Michael Buble without question delivered, but to be different really, really quickly. I actually thought the skills competition delivered. I thought it was probably one of the most interesting skills competitions I can remember in recent memory. I like the games they picked. The one timer competition was fun. Even the little grid slash yeah. thing that they had set up. I thought that was fun. I like the little obstacle course stick handling dealy that they did. Also, I love Connor McDavid setting up a skills competition that he then won. 
skills competition was a big winner for me. So I thought the skills competition delivered. How many times or how many different iterations of breakaway challenges have we seen the NHL do? And they've been bad. And they all flop. Either they're too starchy and boring and the league does something like elimination style or they're too over the top and it's the skits and celebrity judges and it's just dumb and it's a farce. This was the first time I can remember sitting and watching a breakaway challenge and being just blown away by it. Because when it's the player on the one goalie, I know the players kind of copped out a little bit on choosing their goalie, but it was still fun to do that. But when it's the same player on the same goalie and the goalie's trying his hardest to make saves and there's something significant on the line for the players, we saw a great mix of like how deceptive the players can be, how many different moves are kind of in their repertoire. Like to me, that one event, the shootout challenge, that was it for me. That was the big delivering moment of the weekend. I just thought... The competition, the drama, everything was so good. And then even up to the last event, when it's that final obstacle course and it's Connor McDavid, if you come top two, you're winning a million dollars. Like that's legit. That's legit drama. And it's the kind of stuff you don't get in something or usually in sports. Like to me, that skills competition was up there with like the home run derby for like entertainment in a product. I think that going back to the breakaway thing. Picking the goalie you want to face was a fun little detail in it because the goalies, you got to be like, hey, hey, fuck you a minute. <laughs> I like that angle. There was if they had only carried that same mentality through the night before in the player draft would have been way entertaining, more entertaining. We'll get to that. Liam, who delivered for you at the all star weekend? Uh, Connor McDavid. He he made the competition and he won the competition, but also you need your best players to buy in. We obviously saw Kucherov kind of tap out a little bit there, but Connor McDavid led the way of what we want the skills competition on all-star weekend to actually be about. So shout out Connor McDavid for giving it his all. Anything that the reverse delivery, who did not deliver for you for our friends at DoorDash? Every year I forget how painfully terrible the first two games of the three on three tournament are. Because the players have that angle. And I mean, I've been there firsthand for the last three years. When you're eliminated in that first game, you do your media immediately after you're eliminated. And the guys who lose that first game, they are out of the arena by the time the final starts. They do not hang around. Um, Those first two games are terrible because the guys have the incentive of like, you know, if we lose this, we get to head out of here an hour early. The last game is actually pretty good. But the effort level in the first games was just putrid. I thought the player draft sucked. Oh, we were watching it. The three of us, Tyler, Liam and I, we were watching it just like at a pub yep. and uh, just, you know, watching it, hoping for something fun to happen and nothing fun happened. Yeah. It was kind of the boring. players we find out in hindsight, couldn't hear each other at all. So there was no opportunity for interplay. The thing that bothered me a lot was there was no moment where Phil Kessel's waiting to be picked last. Ovi be petitioning for the car. The last four were selected via cards so that's so lame like i understand nobody wants to be picked last and that's part of the fun for a consumer to watch that but the real miss was having no interplay between the teams no interplay between the players and it turns out as leon said in uh after his practice the other day they just couldn't hear each other yeah the the decision to have it inside the arena was again i get it you want to have seats sold you want to have people there but yeah it's just a it's a choice that they made and I think it was a wrong one, but maybe you find just a hall somewhere where you have them up on the stage. They so did that, that the first time when Kessel yes. was last. Yeah. Where they have them all like in a little thing, right? <clears throat> yeah. Like in a big box. And then they hit the captains have to select them via the claw. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. they all get a handful of loonies. Once you're out of loonies, you just get what's left. Yeah. I also think that they should have some kind of rule where you're not allowed to just pick your teammates unless yeah. that is the only players left available. All the Leafs on one team, annoying. All the Canucks on the one team minus Lindholm, annoying. I would have also liked to see Connor and Leon split up. Mm, I thought that fun. would have been fun watching Connor and Leon defend each other. I thought it would have been fun. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they it would be nice if the players, but again, the last thing they all want is the headache of like, oh, the Canucks didn't pick JT Miller. Like, ooh, is there problems, right? And that definitely would have been a thing, I, but I just think you got to take the players out of it. Let the celebrities make the picks for the, of the teams. And that way like it's that just too. completely made up and it doesn't yeah. really matter because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Well, it's then just the, guys getting together and playing hockey. Then Bieber would have had to speak though. Yeah. That could have been a challenge. <laughs> um, I, I do think though, all of the celebrity, 
uh, coaches. Like Will Arnett was pretty funny. He had he some great. really good moments. Good. Uh, Buble obviously stole the show. I thought Bieber coming out and doing warm ups that was during great. the All Star game I was love so that. cool. Dude, he can play. Like I know whatever. It's it's not like a secret that he can play. But right. watching him, like there was one point where I watched him for like three minutes and he didn't shoot a puck once, and I was like. How well can he shoot? And I was glued to the ice being like, come on, shoot the damn puck, Justin. And when he finally did, he shot like three pucks and they were all just like top shelf or bar down, like ding, ding, ding. And it was like, holy crap, he can play. So I thought they were all great. And Tate McCray was also great. Why? The songs. Yep. Hit Stage after presence. hit after hit. Mm-hmm. She knows how to uh, get the crowd into things. Honorable mention also who delivered uh, Marnie. I learned who was the producer of the jacket. That Justin Bieber is wearing now available, Liam. If you want to check your pockets, four easy payments of five eighty five USD. It's on sale. That's Half it. Off. On sale. You'd be stupid not to get it. Four easy. What payments. animal did they pull that from? Uh, the Lorax. Oh, the Lorax. <laughs> Clifford it the Big Red very, Dog. Looked very fantasy esque. <laughs> it just, I loved it. I don't know. It fit in. Like I don't know if he and Buble had this plan, but it, like, <laughs> it fit in exactly to what Buble's vibe was on that play draft. Um, who didn't deliver any other moments just in general, uh, from all-star weekend that you just kind of thought were, are worth mentioning. Hmm. Do we want to get into like the meaty stuff from like Gary gas Might as well? Yeah. Luke Gazzik? Yeah. Yeah. No, no gas. Oh, Gary. Gazzik, taller than Tyler. Significantly. Objectively. Depends on where you measure from the toes to the head. Yep. And we're probably pretty close. Anyways, about two inches. Uh, off. Gary Bettman did his usual, like state of the <laughs> union kind of address talked about uh, a handful <laughs> of things. Obviously there are the updates on the 2018 world junior team. If you want a full update on that, go to dailyfaceoff.com. Frank Saravalli put together a really nice, like FAQ breakdown yep. on everything going on there that takes in what the league has said and what London police said in their uh, press conference the other day. Outside of that, Gary Bettman talked about and Marty Walsh also really talked about the future of the Arizona Coyotes, which I thought was interesting. Marty Walsh, the head of the NHLPA. We'll go into that for a sec because we're going down to Arizona right away. And it makes me feel like it could legitimately be the last chance I'll ever get to go watch the others play there specifically. Yeah. I think it's the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. Last could be the last game against the Coyotes in general. You're right. Marty Walsh basically said like none of the higher ups in Arizona will even return the NHLPA's calls anymore. Um, he talked about how they're playing in a college arena and they're the second tenant in that college arena. How is that the right way to run a business? And he said the Coyotes have blown past two artificial deadlines, which was also a bit of a shot at the league and still don't have a plan for land. He said, listen, they can get land at any moment, but by the time you zone it, figure out if there's hazardous waste underneath of, underneath it, go through referendums. It could be 10 years before the arena is even ready to go. So Basically, Marty Walsh put the heat on the Arizona Coyotes, mm-hmm. and it's led people to speculate that they're not long for Arizona, and they could be potentially the Utah or Salt Lake City Coyotes by next season. Which is interesting because if you listen to the Department of Discipline podcast that goes up and lives in the hockey fights world, the boys had Brad May as their guest last week, and he was just talking about his time playing in Arizona. And he said, listen, it's not that there's no fans that like the Coyotes. But the arena is so far out of Phoenix that it makes going to a game a real hassle. So I've been to a game in Glendale and it is, it was about 45, 50 minutes away from the hotel we were staying at, which was downtown Phoenix. Yeah. And like granted it's by the football stadium. It is. But the difference is there are eight home football games a year. It is very easy to get there on a Sunday afternoon when you're trying to fill 41 home dates of a mm-hmm. hockey team, which is already, you know, a second thought sport in those warm weather climates for the most part, it's impossible. So I think it's disappointing, but again, I'm, I'm ready for something new in the NHL. What did Brad there. may say though? He said, if the arena was downtown and that's just where it always had been, he said Phoenix it was downtown where it was downtown and I, then it moved. But mm-hmm. if it had stayed there, yeah, Arizona had, or Phoenix specifically had the opportunity to be like a top 10, top five market in terms of people that actually care. So in a way it's fun to make fun of the coyotes because they played a teeny little tiny barn center for ants. I also feel bad for the fans that legitimately care and they've just been getting dicked around all over the place. Yeah. I mean, well, and the team has some of the, they have some of the most fun social media that the league has right now um they seem to be able to have fun at their own expense even uh at the silliness that is this experiment but i don't know i i guess i'm just an old fart and i just believe that 
as long as Gary Bettman is ahead of this league, the Arizona Coyotes will be a thing. Which uh, 30 years was just his anniversary not long ago, like a week or two ago. 30 just, years of Bettman. Just feels like a hill he's willing to absolutely die on. Is he already dead on top of it? Well, that's the question. Yeah, I, I think I disagree with that. I think Gary's always held on for the reason that like, kind of Brad May said, if they could get the arena thing figured out, that is a major, major TV player in the US. That is a major metropolitan area. Like it makes sense. The amount of uh, expats who are down there, like Canadian snowbirds, all that stuff. Like it makes a lot of sense. Um, But I just sit and go, if you have Salt Lake City ready to pay an expansion fee right now, or not an expansion fee, a relocation fee, and that's a big TV market and that's going to have the ability, like, I don't know. I, I I could see Gary pulling the plug on it this time. Uh, mouse froze. <laughs> so behind the scenes again, we have the camera froze for the feed. Liam tried to get up and fix it while Tyler was talking. Mouse now frozen. As far as I can tell, we're still recording here. So we're looking good on the audio side. What is going on in this office? Tyler is just Tyler breaking is down now as the episode goes. Going to throw the computer out the window, perhaps on a dog patch patron downstairs. You never hope know. he misses. We hope I'm he trying misses. to find out when they left that downtown arena. There it is. Yeah, the original really home remember. was the American West Arena, which is right in Phoenix. Yeah, they used to share a spot with the Suns way back in the day, right? Oh, yeah. This is the was Suns. It one, was it one of those ones where it was like a janky because it was a basketball arena and you couldn't see chunks of the ice or something like that? I don't like know. Like when the, where was it? The Islanders were playing in the Nets building? Yeah. Uh, Barkley Center. Barkley Center, yeah. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> anyway. I do think it's kind of coming. Sounds like time here. is winding down yeah. you know, for the Arizona Coyotes. But he listed like some of the players that were on that team, when, like when Brad May played there. They've had a lot of talent. Stars. Like Jeremy, stars. Jeremy Roenick. Keith Kachuk. Keith Kachuk was there. Shane Doan, obviously. And former friend Nikolai Habibulin. Former friend Chris Pronger. Oh yeah, one of one of the ends is definitely <laughs> similar to what. Hey, he, his contract Barclay Center was like. Was there. But Former also, that Detroit arena's Red full. Wing, Pavel Datsuk. <laughs> Andrew Ladd was a yote. Saw Andrew Ladd in the airport once when I was going to England. Former friend Tobias Reader. Oh, that's a good one. Lori right. Korpakowski. Kale uh, Cassie. Um, Kale Cassie, what a pull. <laughs> Mikhail oh, Bodka. Good. I'm hung up on Kale Cassie here for a sec. Kale Cassie. Jesus. So good. Yeah. Henry Samuelson. Jordan Osterley. Mm. Gone, Forever. but never forgotten. Jason LaBarbera. Ooh, I like LaBarbera. Very good one. That's mm-hmm. a very, very a good one. Love du- that. Dubnik was a yoke for a bit. Of course, Big Jugs. He was here last year. Now he's back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guarantee you there's a lot of people playing along with this right now. Yeah, probably. Just, just yelling Send us your favorite <laughs> Oilers that used to be Coyotes. That's what I want to know. Jeff Sanderson. Ooh, good pull. Was Matt Hendricks a coyote at one time? No. No. He's a, He's a pred and a and wild. A wild and a jet. Should have never been a jet. Should have retired an oiler. Yeah. If you have any thoughts from the All Star game, feel free to let us know. Hit us up on Radio Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Michael Kesselring. Yeah. Did anyone say that one? Yeah. Um, I mentioned yeah. it under my breath. But Cam Denny. The uh <laughs> The other thing Gary Bettman talked about and the league announced is the return of Olympic hockey in both 2026 and 2030 with player participation. So they got the arena stuff figured out. They got the insurance stuff figured out and they're ready to roll in that regard. So Olympics is great. But what do you guys make of the four nations face off coming next year? Canada, Sweden, Finland, USA, little four team tournament instead of an all star game. I find that the best best on best tournaments exclude most of the world. That is. Yes. See, that's what I like. Uh, That's what I like about it. It's definitely not a pointless tournament. That's a money grab by the NHL in the middle of the schedule. Definitely not that. I'm sure it'll be excellent. Shout out to all the European players who are not allowed to play. I have mixed feelings on it because I totally get it. (laughs) Like, I understand why the NHL wants to get some international play going. I I feel like they were under these negotiations of getting this underway and then the Olympic conversation started happening, but the four nation stuff is already underway. So I'm fine with it. I don't know how we can sit here and argue and say that Russia should be in this competition. Should or should should like they should not be in this competition. I agree. But there's so many people online who just seem to have no idea what's happening outside of the the hockey. hockey world. Like, unfortunately, I know guys like Kucherov and Panarin and Shosturkin have nothing to do with this. And I would love to see them play. 
but their country as a whole is doing something that's wrong and they should not be involved in this. So can Agreed. we just end that debate for all of it? But Leon Dreisel should be there. Because so Germany they, has done nothing wrong this time. They should have like <laughs> this time specific. But we listen, we're watching. We're watching. Why can't I say that? It's a, it's a funny joke. It's I like in it. the history it a good books. Line. It's a good, good historical If you fullback. ignore about a decade and change. Overall, We're fine. In aggregate. There's I guess nothing it, wrong yeah, for that. I mean, it's just Angela a, Merkel is an angel. It's an interesting choice to do for, for the in season tournament. I like the fact that we're going to get a break from an all-star game for two years now so that they can kind of get that reset, refresh. But all isn't that, that a bit of a bummer though, at the same time, because of how good this one yeah. finally was. Well, yes, it's just like, ah, we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> give it a take, right? You learn your lessons from this one. And I think we'll have, we'll come back better uh, in two years time. But I mean, I guess for me, it's like for a league that watched the world cup, uh, what in 2000 and what was the one where they had 15 North- was yeah, it with North America and team Europe. And we, we saw all the trepidation with which hockey fans approached that. And then we saw with which the vigor that hockey fans embraced both those teams yeah, and the storylines that were created from it. And they just threw that out the door and didn't want to use any of that team information. Europe, same thing. Exactly. We could have had a team Europe and a team North America in there to try and kind of, you know, throw back to that, but you could yeah. have had team Europe. So the players that maybe don't that's have a exactly country it. that's, you know, as enough to go in there also participate. Yep. Like if you're going to have a quote unquote best on best tournament and half of the top 10 scorers are not playing yeah. in it, it's not really a best on best tournament. Yeah, I agree. It, yeah. It's a money grab. And I, I listen, I appreciate a money grab. I'm not against it. I'm a capitalist. I just, I really want to see best on best. So I'm, I'm okay with this and I'm okay with the NHL attempting this. The prob I agree. Like if there was a team Europe and there was a fifth team and the tournament was just an extra game, like I think that actually would have been totally fine. Or you could have done like a under 23 or like, see, I didn't like that. Cause I would have liked to see Connor McDavid at 18 playing with Sid. If they did it again next yeah. year, I would have liked to see Bedard with McDavid and Sid versus Bedard with like, but Whoever. isn't this a perfect, like a perfect scenario for that? An in-season tournament where it's not really, you know, it's not going to make or break any team. I don't know. Like it just, it just seems like the perfect spot for them to do that. But I, think, I like team Euro. I think they should have done what the women do where they have like a rivalry game against the U S I think that was just what it meant a little bit more, you so, know, like it's different, but like, the summit series was kind of like that, right? Like, I don't know a ton about that, but it was like, these two teams never play against each other. So right. it was like a rivalry was built and like, you can't have best on best because the NHL wants it to be a strictly NHL event with no European players coming over. So the argument of having Germany, Czechia, all that, I get it, but like, it's not, it's not going to work. So I, I could see a U.S. and Canada series being better. And like, I know there's been, I've seen that online a little bit too. And there's been like, oh, well, we could do like Sweden and Finland as well. I was like, no, screw them. Like, honestly, just do Canada, U.S. We live in Canada or the U.S. The league is Canada, U.S. See, so what I would have actually liked is like a hybrid between the two ideas where the tournament starts with Sweden and Finland playing a best of three and Canada, USA playing a best of three. And then you would have gotten that rivalry. Yeah, that you would have gotten fun, two or three games between those teams, maybe a little bit of hatred. And then you would have had it advanced. The players are hot and juiced up and you get them to play mm-hmm. in, in a final and another best of three final. And maybe you start to create some rivalries out of that best of three final as well. I just picture Leon texting Connor pictures from his vacation in Cabo. <laughs> well, Connor has to play Finland on a Wednesday <laughs> in Boston or whatever. Yeah. It's I don't know. You're right. I, maybe a preseason thing would have been better. Summer thing. That makes sense to me or preseason thing makes sense to me. This is just like a, I, I'm not going to get excited about this. We'll cover it, We're, but I'm looking at I don't know how I'm going to feel. You're an NBA fan, Tyler. What was the, what was the winter NBA tournament received to like? But at least fans? those games to me, before he jumps in, those yeah. games counted as regular season wins. Kind of started in, oh, you can speak to it too, because you follow the association a lot. It started with a lot of pause and players even being like, I don't understand what's going on. But by the end of it, there were some big games that actually like had some heat and had some good moments. Yeah, I, I think it trended in a positive direction, but there was a bit of confusion at the start. But it did mean something. It was weird because there ultimately had to be a winner. And I think people didn't know how to celebrate that. Oh, okay. Which was interesting because the LA Lakers won and then they acted like they had won a championship, but really they hadn't won anything. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was, it was an interesting idea, but it's difficult to do that stuff when you're just doing it with the 32 teams that were going to play each other anyway. Yeah. 
But That's- it's an it's an interesting tournament. I'm not like the biggest fan. I don't really care right now, but I think when it comes around and ultimately we get to see McDavid in a team Canada Jersey, likely with Bedard and Crosby also on the team, like it's going to be cool. And I, the Olympics, I think if the Olympics weren't happening the following year, this would mean a lot more, but now the Olympic deal is in place for the next two. So it's I'm like, very uh, excited about the Olympics. I can't get excited. I'm curious. Uh, I'm, curious yeah. what, I'm curious what casual fans will think. Cause I, the four of us in this room are diehards. I think in an incredibly polite way, we're all to an extent hockey snobs, right? Where we really mm-hmm. want like the perfect thing. I wonder someone who maybe watches, you know, 40 Oilers games a year goes to a handful, but considers himself like a hockey fan. Are they going to sit there and be like, man, this will be really cool. Hey, like Connor and Crosby, like will it get casual fans and kids involved? Cause then it's good for the game. If not, and it's just going to be hockey diehards watching cause we're all sickos and we'll watch anything. Then it's pointless. To your point. I'm also curious about casual fans. Cause now that you were talking about that, it was, makes me think of like the world championships over here. None of us care cause the playoffs are happening at the same time, but over in Europe, it's a big deal. But also too, it's never here, right? Like the world championships are never in North America. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when the world juniors are, are in North America, like, we quite frankly don't care because we can't watch it. But when it's here, it's huge. Yeah. So I'm, I think it'll be big when it happens, but when they inevitably move it to Europe for one year, it's going to be like, well, that was a dull, you know? Yep. That's fair. It's time for the delicious debate for our friends at Wendy's. Of course, the daily face off survivor is still happening. If I'm going to confess, and I'm a real dunce on this one, Liam, I forgot to sign up my team this week. There wasn't one. Was there not? Because it was a two week. Oh, two week run. I'm not I, the dunce. I was out day one though. So I've been waiting a while to, to get in. This would have been a big week to gain some traction on people. I felt like a real dumb dumb for not signing up this week. I got an opportunity because I want a bacon portobello mushroom melt. If you go to dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com, you register a team. Basically, you just got to pick an option in the boxes that are available. What I'm telling you is you're going to look at it and you're going to think it's easy. And I promise you it is not. So the furthest Tyler, you have ever made it in a five day run. I've personally made it to day three and that was the furthest I've gotten. Made it to day four, to day four once and promptly lost. Dan. Day two. Liam. Day four. Devastating. We have yet to win. None of us. None of us. But you can. Dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Please head on over. Sign up. Get yourself a chance to win some cash. Get yourself to win some prizes, some delicious food items from our friends at Wendy's. Tyler, what do you got for a delicious day for us today? The delicious debate today, it's, you know, the Oilers are a little bit past the official halfway point of the season, but All-Star break always represents, you know, what fans view as the halfway point. So today's delicious debate is this. Who's one player you'd like to see have a good second half for the Edmonton Oilers? I'll jump in. I'm not saying he's not having a good season. I'd like to see Ryan Nugent Hopkins score more goals in the back half of the season. He's collecting apples like crazy. He's an apple tree out there. I love to see that. Yeah. He's doing his job, but I'd like to see him get more goals. He's got 12 right now. He's had good looks. He's hit a bunch of bars. Just that signature shot, baby. The game against Nashville. Picked one up. I'd like to see another one tonight against Vegas. More goals from Nuge, please. Down the stretch. Need him. Liam, what do you got? Uh, mine's Warren Fogel. Contract your Fogel. Let's yeah, go. I think he just needs to continue to prove that he can play on that second line and be a, a suitable partner with Leon Dreisaitl as we get close to the deadline. Also, if he can, it's going to make the Oilers' choices at the deadline interesting. Mm-hmm. We talked about more scoring in the top six. Well, Warren Fogel wants to play up there. Perhaps he can. What Tyler? will happen? Only time yeah, will tell. I mean, full with this question where I was going, wasn't necessarily like a struggling player. Like I think a lot of us would look at Connor Brown and be like, Hey, it'd be nice to see him get going a little bit. I think you could argue, you know, Connor McDavid, it'd be great to see him get back to like last year's point production pace in the second half of the year. But my answer is actually going to be Stuart Skinner. He has been lights out the last two months. And I don't think he's going to be a 940 goaltender the rest of the way for the Oilers. Like he's been for the last six weeks or whatever, but Man, if Stuart Skinner from right now until the end of the season sits and rides like a 922 to 925 save percentage, how much more confident are you in this team heading into the playoffs versus if Skinner's at a 905 from now until the rest of the year? Like Stuart Skinner having a big second half of the season where he just cements himself as like a top 12, top 10 goalie in the NHL, maybe even better if you're looking at this year. 
that just does wonders for my confidence heading into the postseason. So he's been great for the last little bit, and I'm not, you can't knock him at all because the numbers speak for themselves. But if Stuart Skinner could have a really good end of the season, to me, it just, it would leave me th- feeling even more confident about the Oilers and their cup chances. Coming down the end of the line, Nish Dan. For me, it's going to be a guy that's, uh, I think, just kind of had a, a quiet year this year. He's been the target of a lot of people's uh, ire, especially recently. Uh, but it's going to be Evander Kane with 29 points in 44 games so far. Not terrible by any means, but I think we just expect more goal production out of a guy. And yeah. if we got that out of our wingers, then the weight is not so high on this team to go out and find more help for scoring. So I think Evander Kane having a good second half would really set up this team for a playoff run, deep playoff run. I would say if I'm throwing in some just who needs to keep it going or even just step it up or just maintain the defensive group. Oh yeah, for sure. The Oilers have been very lucky in terms of the health of their everyday defensemen. Love to see that continued. Love to see some guys, maybe, you know, Cody CZ, man, we're going to talk about you in a little bit. I've got you listed as the Cody CZ conundrum. <laughs> I'd love to see you get a goal, but maintaining their defensive play down the stretch, because it plays some really good hockey and we need them to continue to do so, especially the big dogs yep. like Darnell need you, buddy. Matias at home need you. Keep that going down the stretch. Boosh, need the points. Come on. Anybody yeah. else that sticks out to you, Todd? I think the struggling guys like Connor Brown, like that's an obvious one. Evander Kane, I like Dan's answer. He's been so up and down that, again, if Evander Kane is at his peak heading into the playoffs, you're feeling so much better about the production. You know, Nuge hasn't been his 100-point self from last year, but he's still doing good. But, again, he's such an important part of the power play that I like yep. you brought him up. When he's shooting, that power play just has another weapon to kind of use. So, I think we kind of covered a lot of bases there. Like maybe Pickard Pickard coming in, spelling out. He's doing your thing, here. big man. I think Pickard is important in the next four weeks here. Cause if he comes yep. in and gives the Oilers four more good starts up until the deadline, I think they sit there and go, we don't need to go out and address that spot. And I <laughs> was on the Kevin Carey show today, the big program hmm. with our boy at 1440. And he asked me about that. And I said, you know, it feels like people are just discounting Calvin Pickard because his name is Calvin Pickard. You know, if this was anyone else putting up these numbers over the course of 10 starts, we'd probably be sitting there going, Hey, feeling pretty good about our backups. Both our goalies or Pickard's at a nine 15. He's given them some good starts against good teams, but because it's, because it's Pickard and he hasn't played in the league in a while. And he's a career th- number three or whatever. People just seem to want to write him off when like goaltending is a weird position, man. Connor Ingram was on waivers and now he's the starter in Arizona. Alex Lyon was on Not waiver really line. Pardon? Not really a line. No, human. He's a human. Um, but remember last year when he just came in for Florida and was lights out for two months and was there. Nail. He was their starter for the first game of the playoffs last year in their Stanley Cup run. Crazy. So I don't know. I think Pickard Pickard is another good one. You know, there's a guy that I'd love to see him pick it up in the back half. I'm not saying he's playing poorly. Dylan Holloway. If he could chip in with a little bit more offense, and I think it's going to help that he's playing alongside Corey Perry because Perry's just going to drag him into the mix whether he wants to be in there or not. Having him chip in a little bit more would be a huge, huge win in the bottom six. Huge win. Same with Corey Perry, for that matter. He's playing at a half point per game pace in Chicago. You could bring that into Edmonton. Man, that'd be some nice production to have in the bottom six. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice. I agree. Anybody else? Liam, thoughts? Dreams, wishes, aspirations? Hmm. Dreams, wishes, aspirations. I think I'm good. Excellent. Excellent. A <laughs> couple other things I want to get to before we go. Can you clear that up for me? With our friend Waz, definitely not a game. It is a remember segment. That. As we get towards the segment, please remember it is not a game. I want to talk about Cody CC for a bit. Well, there's fans throwing him out all over the place as a potential upgrade. Tyler, you wrote about it on the site. The analytics community did not appreciate you. No, I got a lot of JFresh charts tweeted my way in the next 24 hours there. It completely ignoring what you wrote. And also, Liam, you wrote about it as well. Luke Gazdick was saying, listen, and I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. If you are going to trade for an upgrade on Cody CC, you better make sure what's coming back is a legitimate upgrade. There's yeah. a lot that goes into it. Him and Darnell Nurse play together a lot. They play together for a long time. They know where each other's going to be. Taking that away is not as easy as plugging in a robot man into a spot where a human has played. And it, look, I think one thing that needs to be said as well is nobody's sitting here pretending that Cody CC is a perfect defenseman. No. Nobody's sitting here pretending that there isn't better players than CC in the NHL. What we're kind of saying is 
is there, how big of an upgrade are you going to be able to find? And it's like, oh, well, we got Ecom last year. And it's like, yes, Ecom was a clear upgrade over Tyson Berry. It's a clear upgrade over pretty much every defenseman they had over Don Elmer's last season. And another layer to it too is, the others had Evan Bouchard waiting in the wings and they needed to let him loose. They don't really have anybody like that right now within the lineup that they can just like bring up. And Broberg, you could argue, but like, if you get rid of Kulak, that's probably where you can bring Broberg. You're not going to put Broberg up any higher in your lineup. It's just, it's a difficult trade to make. If they made it, then I'm sure they'll make the right decision because Ken Holland, to his credit, has made good trades, signings, sometimes maybe not so awesome in the long term, but his trades have been good. So I believe in Holland's ability to make that trade. I just don't know who it is. And everyone wants to say Sean Walker. Is it? I don't know. I don't think so. Frank said today on DFO live that the Philadelphia Flyers have their sights set on getting a first round pick for Sean Walker ahead of the deadline. There you go. That's bananas. You doing it? No. no. Ah. Why not just keep CC at that point? Like what would That's the what difference would truly be? You know? And again, I'm not like, the biggest Cody CC fan in the world, but he's been in that spot and the Oilers are winning with him in that spot. And I know that's kind of a lame argument because you need to make upgrades at the deadline, but I'm all for upgrading CC. If it's a slam dunk, legit high end piece, I think Sean Walker could be a bit better than CC, but to, to give up a first to take that kind of a risk, like I'm is just there any term on Walker or no, no, no is, a UFA. UFA. Ah. is there a chart that would change your mind? Perhaps a graph. Not bar pie line, a pie chart. Oh, pie, mm-hmm. just a pie in general, just a fresh one. Can mm-hmm. Sean Walker bake walk a pie? Can he make guacamole? Can he kill penalties? <laughs> like, what's his name? I don't, I don't remember now. Uh, Cody Caesar, Derek Broussard, Derek Broussard, <laughs> noted PK star. Derek yeah, Broussard. does Sean Walker kill penalties? I don't know a lot about this guy. I know who I know. he is. I know the name, but I don't know anything about him. So and I, I never can contribute in these kind of conversations the way you can, because I was just like, me no name. I know he was a healthy scratch in the playoffs for the Kings last year. I know the Kings cap dumped him this year. Do you have any idea who the Kings lost to in the playoffs last year? The Oilers. Ah. Uh, Sean Walker on the penalty kill this year has spent 106 minutes on the PK. That is already a career high for them, surpassing 84 from the 2019-20 season. So he does kill a little bit of penalties. I don't know. I if, you use, have, if you have a name on who we can upgrade, I'd love to hear. What about realistically? What do, what do you think happened? We're just under a month out from the trade deadline. It's March 8th. We're going to have a bunch of stuff, including a daily face-off trade deadline show again. Be able to watch Frank all day. That would be nice. What are you expecting from the other side? Because th- we didn't expect that home last year. Two trades, I think. I think they had depth. I think they go for the depth approach because last season in the playoffs, the top end score and let them down a little bit. So I think if you can just add more scoring wherever that may be, that's what they're going to try and do. Well, if you got 1.9 million in cap space, I keep saying if they send down Yam Mark and get like 2.9, I think that's why they'll try and go. That math confuses me, but that's okay. 1.9 plus 1 million. Oh yeah. Cause you go with an, with one less skater on the roster. Speaking of going with less skaters, yeah. do you think there's a chance at all that Jack Campbell makes a return? He's got some good numbers down in Bakersfield. Bruce Kerlock has been doing the gourds work tracking the condors at oilersnation.com. But another layer of that too is take out the play. Like Campbell's been playing better, mm-hmm. but then you lose ex- that extra cap space. That's the question. I would no. not do it. It's and not a roster it. player. Not worth it. Like not if Pickard right now is at an 890, sure, then maybe. I'd be like, okay, you know what? Let's do it. Who cares? Let's try to see if Campbell can get hot for a little run here. But Pickard's good, so there's no reason to bring in a more expensive option that isn't as good. Dan, what do you think? For, for a defensive person to bring in? Or just bring back anyone? Soon? Well, no, I mean, I I don't think you can mess with the juju that you got here. We, we have so many games in hand to catch up on other teams still, too. Like, I think you need to have a consistent backup that can spell Skinner and give him some breaks here down the stretch. So, yeah, no, I'm I, like, I love the story of Campbell back there. I believed that we were going to bring him up at some point, but I think Pickard has played his way into making that obsolete. Yep. It's going to be fascinating. Again, we've got just under a month left until the trade deadline. Silly season is here, everybody. Stay tuned to OthersNation.com. We've got the rumors. We've got the news. We've got the transactions. We're looping in everything Frank Saravalli says in OthersNation every day and at DailyFaceOff.com. I was badgering Frank in Toronto. 
we were sitting down for a beer, he and I. I go, Frank, what are the others going to do? Just Ken's working the phones, man. I'm like, I know that. Are we talking depth picks or is he want to make a swing? And he goes, you know what? He might want to make another swing. It's his last year's GM. Wants to put a big stamp on it. Big stamp on the run. He goes, whether or not it happens, of course, we've got to see. But I didn't expect that come last year. Yeah. And I mean, hey, I think if you're Ken Holland, you've sat now and seen the Jets get their guy and you've watched the Canucks, Canucks get their guy. And I do agree adding a defenseman would be great, but only if the right defenseman's available. And right now the right defenseman isn't available. I think there are or yeah, there are a couple of names out there that would be the right forward to add. Jake Gensel, Travis Konechny, maybe one day Tyler Toffoli, Dare to Dream, Never Stop Believing. Um, but if one of those three, like I think you've watched other teams around you make their big splash. If you're Ken Holland and you get closer to the deadline and that dream defenseman isn't there, I could totally see him getting an itchy trigger finger and saying, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for Gensel or I'm doing this for Konechny. If you get hit by a bus tomorrow. God help, God help us if it happens, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Could we just take all of your old Ricard Raquel clips and just put to run them to folio to folio over top now? Yeah, actually, that's a good way to keep making go. podcast content with me. Huh? Just if I were to get like, hit by a bus, I would yeah. love the Oilers to trade for Tyler. To <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. We're we probably pretty work. close to having enough audio banked of me where we could just AI the whole show. <laughs> Listen, the AI tunes that have dropped in the last calendar year, we can make this work. In fact, probably all of us have enough audio hours recorded at this point that none of us are really necessary anymore. I'm not even here. <laughs> this podcast. Is I'm a robot. I produced. <laughs> you have no idea listening to this, but I haven't been here in months. 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 Renate's was is, can you clear that up for me? A segment, not game. Very, very quickly. Uh, just one thought or one last thing I want to do before we get there. Raphael Lavoie named to the AHL All-Star game, played in that. <laughs> Do you think he gets pulled up down the stretch or we kind of pass that for now? I I could see it. Barring injury. I think only if there's an injury. I just look and it's like you clearly have some level of trust with Sam Gagne coming in and out of the lineup. They obviously had Ernie up to play a fourth line role over uh, Raph. His job in the NHL, I heard. I I agree with that. I think right now there's enough depth in the lineup that it's not going to happen. The only way it could. No. I'm going to say unless there's multiple injuries, he's not coming up. I was going to say if a skill player went down, but like we saw Dylan Holloway go down and they didn't call up Lavoie. So like even if someone in the top six were to go down, I think all that would happen is Lavoie or Perry would get moved up and or sorry, Holloway or Perry would get moved up and Lavoie would stay. Should he be sent to Guantanamo Bay? No, I like Ralph Lavoie. Okay. (laughs) All right. Just had a fight in Bakersfield. If you want Did to he? check that How'd out, how'd it go? Hockeyfield, hockeyfight.com. Uh, hockeyfights.com. There we go. Uh, he did good. He surprised me when I saw his name come up. I thought, mm, I don't know, but Who's, he's, he's a pretty fight. Big, strong guy. I honestly, I he's a big kid. It, it was There's someone in Vancouver it system. It. Yeah, it was. Was it, was it quads? Did he fight quads? Arshdeep Baines. Arshdeep Baines. That sounds right. Sounds like a Bond villain. I like that name. He just won uh, MVP at the All Star game. It was uh, versus Podzolkin. Podzolkin. Oh, I think it was. Sorry. Bust. Uh, There's another Canucks bust. We are going to step away for a quick break. And when we come back, it's time for Waz's signature game or bit or segment. Can you clear that up for me? Our friends at Greta. It is time for Waz's signature segment. Can you clear that up for me tonight? The Edmonton Weathers pursuit of 17 straight games. We're going to be down at Greta watching it together. Come on down. If you hear this in time, join us. Join Down us. at Greta. Greta. We're have a little watch party. Watch party. We're going to enjoy the game. Enjoy We're going to play game. some vids. You can stare at Waz. All good, good stuff. <sighs> Make it your pre and post game spot. Watch the boys do after dark there as well. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why don't you? Why wouldn't you? Don't be silly. It's the first game in what feels like a thousand days, Waz. I'm excited. Days. Tech Should Nine's be. excited. Tech Nine? Yeah, he said the Oilers will win. Excellent. He, Where he, did Tech Nine say this? Uh, with Pete Blackburn and What's Chaos. They interviewed wow. Tech Nine and he just learned who the Oilers were as well. So Blueface also said they were going to win, as did uh, Lil Pump. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Did Pete interview all those people? No, I made oh. those last ones. Oh, oh. wow. Well, Oilers right. jersey showing up all over Instagram, though, on random people's feeds. I saw some of that. Uh, there's going to be a lot Sierra. of Oilers fans down in Vegas. Yeah. I actually just yeah. learned who Sierra was, actually. She's I an know. icon. I didn't know. Hmm. Anyways, Lil Nas was, X was wearing a Gretzky jersey. Yeah, that's wow. that's all. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe, stylish. Kobe Bryant. 
Gone but never Back forgotten. in the day. Yeah. You are on one today, big guy. Kobe. <laughs> he was it's a very famous picture. It is a very famous picture. All right. Uh, Boss, got, can you clear that up for me? I got a few of them. Uh, clear this up for me. Does talking about trading a player mean you're running him out of town? I saw one comment no. that was like uh, a CC posting man. It was very positive, I thought. It was like, it was like, oh, you're running a player out of town because you kept talking about trading him. Like, what? No, running out of town is what I'm doing to Yanmark. Talking about trading CC is just trying to figure out ways this team can improve the roster. The, the Yanmark thing is just like you've you've got your sights set on it's the great guy. bit. <laughs> yeah. Not a segment, it's a bit. Liam, um, is that running somebody out of town if we just say, hey, maybe the Oilers could upgrade Cody Cece? No, I don't I don't think so. I don't really know what that means. Really missed an opportunity to have Rick in the room here. Yeah, yeah honestly. The thing is, yeah, I wish we would call him immediately. <laughs> I think the thing with that is nobody's saying Cody Cece's bad. Well, the, the, the chart people do. That's I don't. A, but a, is there an opportunity to upgrade? Yeah. I was sports, baby. It's a cold motherfucker. I know he's been in the news this week, but I would say Jesse Poyavi was running out of town in a way, right? Like in the I sense s- that he could never do anything right. In some Listen, people's yeah. eyes. like if, if if Connor Brown's name was Jesse Poyavi, he'd be taking a lot more shit for having no goals. At this point. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. I don't think a player has been run out of a. I'm trying to. I was just trying to think of a player that's been run out of a town in an NHL or team. It like really, I think people would use Pulley RV as an yeah. example. Justin Schultz, oh. yeah, Schultz, but yeah. like he was getting booed when he was touching the puck by the time it was all said and done. Remember maybe, that? Yeah, that, maybe that would be the that best. was a bad one too. Because, but like again, that wasn't Justin Schultz's fault that they stuck him on the first pairing, expecting him to play first pairing minutes. We are having so much issues with the camera right now, people. <laughs> like, if you could see the look on Tyler's face as he's at the desk trying to sort this out, the camera is not going to work. So when you watch the full video on YouTube, you're just gonna see blank spots. Maybe there won't be a full video on YouTube. Maybe there won't be. <laughs> this is what happens when we go to an event. Everything gets messed up. Half videos. What's but your like, second what question? Touched in here is what I want. The second know. question I have. I got uh, another one. It's actually related to Matthias Janmark. Clear this up for me. Why do the likes of Matthias Janmark, <laughs> who don't produce, keep getting into the lineup instead of someone like Sam Gagne? Do Tyler, some- I'll take this one. Yeah, Tyler, go ahead. You take this one. I don't buddy. know if you talked about this already. Wow, that's interesting. I never thought about it that way. They should. Uh, but he's Janmark's really good defensively. I think it's similar to like Connor Brown, right? Like Connor Brown helps on the PK. I think he's generally been good defensively, not as good as Janmark, obviously. But for those two guys, like, and maybe it's more of a Brown thing than a Janmark thing. But like, you can see he's doing a lot of good things on the ice. So it's easy to be like, okay, he can stay in the lineup because the puck moves in the right direction when he's out there. If it's Yan markets, the puck's not going in his net when he's out there. So I think that makes up for it a little bit. It's maybe the mindset of like, Hey, preventing a goal is just as important as scoring one, right? Penny saved is a penny earned. Liam. Yeah. What mm-hmm. a luxury Oiler fans have now to be worried about <laughs> like players getting points. I remember the nineties when our second line was having guys like a Matthias Yanmark as the that wasn't offensive even that, punch. Not in the nineties, buddy. That was like the Aikens era. Yeah. Look at some I mean, of those teams. They were awful. This is uh, it's, <laughs> they were you know, really it's tough bad. to watch. It's crazy that an NHL team might need more than just points on it. We traded for Lori Korpakowski. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 a, that's a throwback. That's a good call. Mm hmm. What else you got, boss? Uh, next one here is uh, Brett Kulak and Evander Kane have a history of showing up in the playoffs. Fans tend to cling on to the fact that you can't trade them because of what they bring in the postseason. Clear this up for me. Is there a guarantee that happens again with the likes of Kulak and Kane? Evander Kane didn't, wasn't that good in the last playoffs. I always keep hearing, oh, you need him in the playoffs. I agree. Like, the intangibles are awesome. Yeah. yeah. But the, there's no guarantee on anything with sports, really, you know? Even like Brett Kulak seems to be like a little untradeable to some fans because the playoffs he had last year. I'm like, is that going to translate to this year's playoffs? A sinkhole could open up and swallow us all into the earth. Was this is very no true. Into that. There's never a guarantee about that kind of stuff. So I, I think it's a fair point that like, you know, just because some remember uh, who what team was it that signed Philly Leno to like a, Buffalo? Like Buffalo signed him this crazy contract because he had the one good playoffs with Philly. And it was like, God, like he's a playoff performer. You want that guy. And then he stunk. And it's like. I don't know. Sometimes guys are playoff performers. Sometimes guys just get hot I mean, at the right time. You know, like there's very few. I think of like Justin Williams. I think of as a playoff performer, Mr. Game Seven. Like Sick. great nickname. Was Pisani one of those? 
But he did it once. You only did it once. Yeah, right? there you go. So there's no guarantees of anything. I, I would rather have a guy with skills, uh, with Kane's skill set and size and physicality in the playoffs than not. There's no guarantee. Anything. In Fernando's defense, he only had the one playoff run Facts. he was ever a part of. So. Facts. Zach, Zach Cassian did the same thing, right? 2017, what was it? 2017 yeah. was yeah. unbelievable. He was literally in the hype video for his new Czechia team. Yeah. And then what happened after that? He never had a big playoff. He yeah. scored that goal in the conference finals against Colorado. And now the last goal of the season in, Czech, in the Czech yeah. Republic. But I'll like, again, guy. that's a great example almost in this Kane thing of like, he was electric one playoffs and everyone held on to that. Don't trade. You need Cassian come playoff time. And then in that next run, he was invisible. I also like, there's another part of it where I struggle to compare a Cassian to a Kane. Like yeah. one of them has done it consistently for a long time. Maybe not yeah. so much this year. The other is Zach Cassian. Also, uh, Shout out Liam Reddix, who played with Vili Leno in Vax Joe. Interesting. Shout out to Sweden. Liam Reddix and all the things that he did to deserve the jersey retirement. Mm-hmm. Co-signed by Tyler Gramshaw. Yep. Hey, Vili Leno didn't get to a point of game either. Tough well, league to play in. Maybe that league's just harder. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that league's harder. Waz, what else you got? That's all I got. Real quick, what are your thoughts on the All-Star game? Oh, it was okay. I, I, I thought the draft was a little awkward. It was boring. Yeah, very boring. Mm-hmm. But the skills comp was kind of fun. Uh, the the one Kucherov, uh, what was the one passing one? I thought that was boring. Like I could see why he that lost. That one was a very confusing. Yeah, event. I was like, what, what are we doing here? Oh, I want to ask you, Oz, what did you think of Justin Bieber cropping Nathan McKinnon out of his photos? Yeah, okay, I don't care. I thought Bieber was cool. I thought he brought a good energy though. Bieber's legit. Yeah, big pops. It was funny to see all the people though in the comments for this this kind of stuff. It's like, who the hell is Tate McRae? It's like, a bunch who? of dudes who don't understand that the All Star Game is not for them. Yeah, and it's like, I'm looking at it, I was like, well, Tate McRae's got more followers than any show player. <laughs> Tate McRae's massive. Yeah, same with Michael Bublé. And like, a lot of people seem to not like these celebrities coming into the hockey world. It's weird. Hockey's weird. It's jealousy way. a little bit. For yeah. Sure. Envy. I wish I could have stood on the bench. Why couldn't coach. Metallica have been the captain? Yeah. Fuck, yeah. Nickelback. Yeah. Uh, get, Nickelback Nickel- would have been great. Nickelback would be well, sweet. They've been involved how many times on that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, but, yeah. It's one of those things where, unless it's just for me, yeah. Perfectly tailored for my interests. I don't like it. Yeah. You know, I haven't thought that uh, that talk performer, that guy, he's good music. I didn't, I couldn't hear that. We were at the airport. Oh, fair Liam enough. and I watching with mm. the sound off. He just had his on a TJ's on on a TV that wasn't big enough. Oh, the screen was too big for the TV. Yep. They're, so, uh, so we were watching and there was no bottom bar till I was like, the that they're sco- settings the, off the scores and everything. Oh. So it was very unpredictable. We didn't know who won the event until we went on Twitter. So okay. Jay, Liam and I just, we would guess who yeah. was winning. That's fair. Yeah. And then we'd confirm on Twitter. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, There's Waz with, can you clear that up for me for our friends ball. at Greta? There goes Waz. Go hang out with Waz tonight. Challenge him to Mario Kart. He'll roast you. I've seen him drive. He's ready to go. He's ready to boogie. He's ready to battle. Dangerous driver. I would not <laughs> expect anything else. The day before the pond hockey tournament in Jasper, uh, sales guy Jared was like, we should get Waz to drive us. Like, let's get Waz to drive us. And the next day, Waz had to pick him up from somewhere. And sales guy Jared texts me and goes, I can see why you were hesitant on this idea. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's a uh, speedo torpedo sales guy, Jared. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, mm-hmm. you know, of course, let's wrap up the podcast. Got some reviews for us, Tyler, for our friends at Oodle Noodle? We do have some reviews. If your review is read, you can email Kennedy at uh, thenationnetwork.com and she can hook you up and uh, get you sent a little free box of Oodle Noodle your way. Well, Tyler's pulling those up. We got some line combos to discuss, gentlemen, ahead of tonight's game against the Vegas Golden Knights, where the Oilers, again, looking to match the 1992-93 Pittsburgh Penguins. Longest win streak in NHL history. First line, Nuge, McDavid, Hyman. Love it. Love those three back together. Kane, Dreisaitl, Fogel. That is your second line. Holloway, McLeod, Perry, Yanmark, Ryan Brown is your fourth line. Any objections to any of those lines? Dan, Tyler, or Liam? No objections. I do not object. I love that they went uh, nuclear when they did and then just pulled right back off of it now that you're nice and rested and you want to build like or get back to the longevity lines, I'll call them. These are the line combos that you want to run with into the playoffs that make you the most successful over a long sample size. The only thing I don't particularly like, and I know he's not going to spend a whole lot of minutes there, is Derek Ryan at center. Yeah, I would like if he popped in to take draws on the right side, maybe, but you know, work in progress. Scenario of necessary upgrade. I could also see that. Right. Or if you add a winger and Dylan Holloway is your fourth line center, 
a fourth line of Holloway, Brown, and Derek Ryan might actually be okay with Dylan Holloway busting up and down the middle of the ice. <laughs> Deep pairing stay the same. Yeah. Nurse CC at home, Bouchard, Deharnay, Kulak. Set your watch to him. You know, I do really notice that about Nobby. He doesn't change his lines ever. I like that. No. It seems like he really knows exactly when to push the right buttons. He mixed them up the last two games in January, and I felt like it was needed, and he got a response for it. So who's that against? Bench management. Chicago and Nashville, right? Yep. I think another layer of this is, too, is you can overwhelm both of those teams Mm -hmm. with just that one line of attack. Mm -hmm. For a team like Vegas, I know they're not going to have Eichel and and Shea Theodore, but they're still a dangerous team. Of course. So if you can have a few layers of attack now, it's a bit more pressure on them, and I think that's kind of the idea of tonight, too, by the looks of it. Curious to see, Connor mentioned uh, that Oilers fans travel very well. I'm curious to see how many blue and orange jerseys are at T-Mobile Arena. It'll be crazy. There's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. I'm just glad it's against Vegas and not one of those scrub teams so that if the unthinkable happens and this doesn't work out for us tonight, all the fans that were discrediting us on this streak will be like, oh, well. They play yeah. I think team, all those guys are idiots because if <laughs> it was so easy to do, then there if there would be 16-game heaters all the time. And, man, you know what? I bet you they wouldn't have said anything had we lost to Chicago. It probably would have been pretty quiet. Yeah. But, Dan, said anything. Vegas don't have eye call tonight. Ah, that is true. There was one one of the arguments in that whole thing, and everyone went through and nitpicked every win, right? One of them that really made me laugh was like, they played Jonathan Quick against the New York Rangers. He's their starter. It's like he is literally their best goalie right now. He had like a one thirty something goals against. Who expected Sturkin to fall off the map this this year? Different story. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, what do you got for reviews? All right, for free uh, Oodle Noodle GC. Yeah, at Brendan Airy on Twitter left us a review on Apple Podcasts and said five stars. Get a slice of this. This podcast hits like a single slice of pizza after an Oilers win at Rogers. Hmm. He gave a shout out to a specific company and added, "Not a sponsor, but if you know, you know." So that was weird, but congratulations, yeah. Brendan. Thanks for the five-star review. Uh, we got a four-star review that says, New Oilers Nation drinking game. Take a shot every time he's speculating it's Dan that yawns. Take a shot every time Dan yawns like he has slept in a month on Mike. Try not to die. Jan 30th episode. Love the show. Love the boys. Go Oilers. That one from Ignition Do you yawn Matt. a lot? I, I yawn. I do yawn. I, to be fair, this is when I take a nap usually, so not my fault completely. But uh, Dan's yeah, also deal, on. dealing with the chilling. Oh, hey, Dan's got to deal with kids. I do have kids and I hockey, fights, hockey fights. Yeah, late at night, every night. I get it. Yeah. I I also yawn quite a bit. I, I just encourage you yawn. all to play the yawning drinking game. Uh, I know see Hirsch. We said yawn so many times, and only one yawn came out. That's pretty good. I'm really bad at it. I'm resisting. Uh, five stars from C Hirsch, who says, "Love the boys, <laughs> long time listener." I thought it was funny how someone was yawning every four to five minutes through oh, no. episode three forty nine. <laughs> Thanks for the weekly pod. It's not fun to hang out with you guys every week. <laughs> I can tell you guys care about the Oilers, and I love coming to a space where the criticisms are fair and there are actual solutions and support given to the team when the team is struggling. Keep it up for your efforts. So you three can email Kennedy at the nation network.com to redeem or get your access to your oodle noodle box. We have to work on our yawning. We just really exaggerate them. You got to pull the mic away when you do. Yeah. Just really exaggerate them now, boys. 350 episodes in. We're still learning proper mic. Technique. Two reviews, both about yawns. <laughs> <laughs> we're on fire. Pretty exciting podcast. <laughs> As we wrap up the podcast today, another error with the camera. Is this going to work? Yep. I'm just looking at the, I'm looking at the audio counter. As long as that one's going up, we can make do with whatever's on this. Other. I'm just, I'm yeah. going to pitch it. You guys, we should go back to garage band. Go back <laughs> should to we go back series. to garage band? Uh, let's just give it a shot. Did that have a break? Uh, yes. Uh, we have multiple <laughs> Only episodes. Only every other minute. Yeah. Multiple episodes <laughs> that were completely lost. Thanks to garage band. <laughs> happens to the best of us. Real quick. We're going to wrap up the podcast here. I need two things from all of you. Liam, I need a key to victory over Vegas tonight for getting win 17. And then I need a score prediction. What say you, sir? What's your key to victory and score prediction? The key to victory as I yawn, funnily enough. Um, Getting another review now, damn it. (laughs) Win oodle noodle. My key to victory. There goes Tyler. (laughs) (laughs) I've only yawned once. Uh, Don't play for the moment. Play the game. Wow. There you go. That's deep. There's some motivational speaking going on here. Okay. Uh, score. score four two Oilers. Wow. He did it to <laughs> you. Is that? He did it to you. You can't choose that now. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. You think I'm gonna break my bit of the last five years? No. Tyler, 
I need a key to victory and I need a score prediction. <laughs> Keep your structure. The Oilers have been very good and structured over the course of this winning streak. It's resulted in them winning low scoring hockey games. So keep that going and you'll be good. Was, Stop yawning. I can't now. It's in my head. <laughs> there goes Tyler again. What is with you two? Uh, you guys are syncing up. If cycle. someone says I'm it, I do it. it. I'm fighting it. I'm not doing it. I'm not yawning. Okay. Caffeine is broken up. They're going to win five to two. Nation Dan, I need a key to victory and I need a score prediction. Well, I my key to victory is going to be played defensively. I do think that this one's going to be one of those games where Vegas comes out and it's just hard in the paint in that first period. I I want to be wrong, but I think it's going to be a 6-5 Oilers win. I'm going to do a 4-2 win. We already knew that was coming. Key to victory. I want a better start. Mm. The Oilers have had some really sloppy starts over the last handful of games during this win streak. They navigated it fine. How about we get out ahead first instead of having to come back from a goal or two? I'd like that. Be cool for the crowd too. Simple game. Shoot the puck, crash the net, get greasy. We don't need to try any pretty plays in the first game back from holidays. Agreed. A bunch of the guys were probably, you know, they were in Mexico. Liam's yawning. He's very bored of this podcast. <laughs> they were just busy. So just play a simple game. Shoot, pass, kick some ass. <laughs> <laughs> Holy! That's so we're gonna wrap up the Tuesday episode of Nation Radio. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody.